Welcome back to my YouTube furniture painting channel. Let me start off by saying I am officially an idiot and I completely forgot to film an intro and an outro for this video. So we'll just appreciate a slow panning of a still image of the before shot of these bedsides. Which are the pieces that I'm going to make over today in the video? I'm going to use terra clay paint and I'm going to go for a really kind of colourful but chippy look. So these bedsides are obviously very solid wood. They're my favourite type of furniture to paint. Absolutely love this style. And they're usually waxed, but these aren't. So praise be that they're not waxed because I don't have to strip them. So I went straight in and cleaned them with Dixie Bell's White Lightning Cleaner and a microfiber cloth. And then once they were clean, I gave them a good old rinse with some clean water and a clean cloth. Out comes the electric sander for a quick scuff sand. I am literally just breaking the existing finish of this piece, these pieces. Um, I don't obviously need to strip them back to bare wood. I don't need to strip the existing varnish off. I am just looking for a light haze on the surface, which means the existing finish has been broken and that's just gonna give us better adhesion. And then we are gonna go straight in with some cooking utensils and start baking. No, I'm only kidding, we are not gonna bake. These are a really cheap set of silicon utensils that I got from Amazon. And I'm gonna use them to apply absolutely loads of texture all over these bedside tables. So the idea is I'm gonna build up some base layers of texture. The product that I'm using here is Dixie Mud and it's in the colour white. It actually comes in three colours but I'm going to use white because I kind of want it to look like um, a base layer of white paint. Um, the other colours that it comes in are brown and black so I'm not going to use those today but I'm just using the white one for now and I am just applying it randomly all over and I'm using a combination of those utensils that you saw. Some of them obviously are gonna give me a, a smoother kind of flatter, sort of smoothed out finish. And then the smaller ones are gonna sort of concentrate the Dixie Mud in smaller areas. So the idea behind creating a textured finish is going to give it obviously uh, the appearance of age and I'm also going to be distressing this back so that it looks chipped away and um, aged, worn, those kind of things. So I'm building up texture at the very base so that when I sort of distress it back later all that texture will give me that desired look or I'm hoping it will give me the desired look. So I did that process to both bedsides and then let that dry completely. The next thing I'm going to do is apply more texture but in a different way and a different kind of texture. So I'm using the colour drop cloth from the chalk mineral paint range and I'm also using sea spray which is a texture additive that you may have seen me use before. It comes in powder form and you add it to your paint. The more powder you apply in your paint, the thicker the paint gets. And if you add loads, you get like a really sort of thick paste. If you add a little bit, it just kind of gives you a little bit more texture to the paint. So you can add as much as you like. I added quite a bit because I am going for a very heavily textured distressed look. And I'm just gonna mix it all together to make sure that it's all evenly mixed into my paint. And to apply this, I'm gonna use a premium chip brush. So these are inexpensive brushes that have a natural bristle, and I'm using a various different methods of applying it. In some places, I'm just applying it as I would a paint and brushing it on. And then in other areas, I'm stippling my brush on the surface, which just pouncing it on the surface, and that's gonna give me some more texture in those areas. I'm also going straight over the Dixie Mud, which is now dried fully. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want this to be an all over coat of this particular color. 
Um, when I do this look, I quite often use this particular neutral, which um, it, it's a really good coverage. And it's also sort of slightly got a, a warmer tone to it. So it gives that kind of antique look. And the reason that I have used a couple of different techniques in order to achieve the texture on the base is because I think if you use maybe a couple of different techniques, um, so obviously in my case I've used the Dixie Mud with the spatulas and now I'm applying sea spray with paint with a paintbrush, I think it gives a little bit more authenticity. So if you um, look at something that's distressed, it's not all kind of chipped away and distressed in, a, in the same way. Um, so by creating a little bit of randomness to your texture, then it kind of looks a little bit more authentic, or that is the idea anyway. So once the base colour was on, I let that dry overnight um, because I wanted it to dry completely before I added my colours. So the first colour that I'm going to use is Honky Tonk Red from the Chalk Mineral Paint range. I am applying it in um, what can only be described as a, a toddler fashion. Um, and there's a reason for that. I want this to look really hand-painted, rustic, chippy, distressed. So I am applying it not very neatly. That is intentional. And I'm hoping that it'll kind of pay off in my later kind of stages. So I added red where I thought I wanted red, a little bit on the feet, and then I added some around the top as well. Um, I did take some of that away afterwards because I felt like there was a little bit too much red, um, but that's the beauty of this look. It can be layered and chipped away and distressed and you can change your mind. I am leaving this little bit of footage in here because I was trying to show you the perfect turquoise colour and my kids were waving in front of the camera, not realising I was trying to film. So that is the most perfect turquoise colour, in my opinion. I absolutely adore this colour. It's called Lanny's Lagoon. You can look away from the camera now, it is on. Um, it's called Lanny's Lagoon and it is from the Terra Clay Paint range from Dixie Belle. I'm using a premium chip brush to apply this. Again, I'm gonna kind of lean on that natural bristle brush to get some texture in the paint. So this paint is a clay-based paint. It's eco-friendly. It's very highly pigmented. You can see I'm going straight over the red and it's covering it in one coat. It is also not self-leveling. So it is perfect for distressed finishes, blended finishes, chippy finishes, anything that you want to create with a little bit of texture and movement on the surface, this is the paint for you. So I'm speeding this up because I am literally just applying this colour over everything apart from that kind of door panel recess bit that I've done in Honky Tonk Red. Everywhere else had a coat of Lanny's Lagoon all over it and I am going to distress this back so the reason that I use chalk mineral paint as a base is because um, terra clay paint reactivates with water and um, I wanted kind of a very solid blocky kind of look to this I'm not going to blend or anything like that and I didn't want the colors to mix so I didn't want to run the risk of using um, terra clay paint as a base colour for the white because I didn't want them to kind of mix together I didn't want to reactivate that white colour so there's no danger of that happening if I'm using chalk mineral paint again I let that fully dry down so each time I am adding a new colour I'm allowing it to fully dry down before moving on to the next stage and the next stage is my favorite part and that's the distressing part so i'm using a combination of different ways to distress this the first thing that i'm going to go in with is the sharpest scraper that i've got in my toolkit and that's a carbide scraper i will link it in the description below i've got mine off amazon you can get a couple of different sizes you can also get replacement blades for them as well and they are really really sharp um, i'm only pressing on super super lightly and it is dragging off all of those layers underneath 
So this scraper is ideal if you want to reveal sort of the wood underneath. This will take it right back. Obviously this paint has been freshly painted. Even the base coat has only been on a couple of days. So it is still relatively soft. It's obviously dry, but it's not cured. And this, this, this scraper, spit my words out this scraper is super sharp so it will take your paint finish right back to the wood so if you don't want to see the wood coming through i do hence the reason for me using the sharp scraper but if you don't want to see the wood coming through don't use such a sharp scraper use um maybe a plastic spatula or a palette knife which is going to give you a little bit less of an aggressive finish So I'm really concentrating this um, scraper around the kind of edges of the door, places that would get battered the most, the sort of corners as well, anywhere where I think that might get sort of knocked and dinged. It's also really handy if you look on Pinterest at sort of old doors or um, worn furniture that is genuinely aged and worn as to get an idea where it wears. So you wouldn't find wear and tear in sort of nooks and crannies because that wouldn't get sort of touched and knocked and worn where you would find wear and tear is any moving parts like i say around door edges and frames and corners where it would get knocked naturally the other good thing about this look is don't panic if you do feel like you distress too much you can always add layers back in at a later date um, and I did actually do that on a couple of places where I decided that it was a little bit too heavy in terms of distressing. I went back in and layered some of the Lanny's Lagoon, which is a turquoise colour. I layered that back over the top because I just felt like it wasn't, it didn't look authentic and I didn't want that particular um, sort of distressing in that area um, and you can do that with this look because it obviously is very textured and heavily layered that it just adds to the authenticity in my opinion so first we've been photo bombed by a child or I should say video bombed uh, now we've been photo or video bombed by a dog so this is Bella she is my rescue um, she's a little bit needy, but yeah, she likes to come and see what I'm up to. The, the next thing I'm going to do is do a little bit of wet distressing. So you remember me saying earlier on that Terra is able to be reactivated with water, even if, oh, I'm just singing away there. That's a little bit cringe. Um, even if you have left your Terra to dry for weeks on end, you can go in with a damp rag or a cloth and rub away at it until it's sealed and it will reactivate. So wet distressing with Terra is super easy. So all wet distressing is, is instead of rubbing away at the surface with sandpaper, you are rubbing away with a damp rag or a cloth and it just gives you a slightly softer, more worn look as opposed to a more kind of chippy, scratched away at look. It does give very different looks. And the reason that I'm using two different techniques or several different techniques to distress, again, goes back to what I said at the beginning, variation gives you more authentic looking results or that's what I think anyway. And you remember me saying that you can just add layers back in if you don't like something or if you feel like you've gone too heavy with the distressing. So that particular bit on the front panel there wasn't a big fan of that. It was just a little bit sort of too much for the look that I wanted. So I'm just going back in with the Lanny's Lagoon on a premium chip brush and just whacking a bit more over, basically. It's as easy as that. I also decided to just sort of start dry brushing a little bit of the Lanny's Lagoon back over the Honky Tonk Red. So some of the areas of red were a little bit too red. Um, I just sort of stepped back and looked at it and it's just really about playing around with what you think looks right. There's no real rhyme or reason to this. So um, initially I thought I wanted quite a lot of red on the top sort of bit and the feet, but then 
I covered that over <laughs> and then I distressed it back a bit. So here I'm just applying it Lanny's Lagoon over that wet distressing because I just felt like I wanted the centre panel to really be the focal point. Um, and that red kind of around the panel just I really liked how that looked and I felt like too much red elsewhere Kind of took your attention away from that if that makes sense at all But like I say it, it was just a, about playing around with um, Where I wanted the color placement to be really Okay, and because I wanted that kind of center panel to be a focal point, I decided to try my hand at something which has been on my to-do list for absolutely ages, and that is to try and make my own stamp. So I actually bought a lino stamp kit from Amazon, which I will link below, um, <laughs> probably about a year ago and it sat on my shelf and I've kept wanting to do it, kept wanting to do it. And then at Christmas, um, my daughter got given one and I decided to use a little bit of that because it was a little bit more basic than the one that I'd bought off Amazon and I couldn't be bothered to read the instructions. I'm not gonna lie, I don't read instructions, they put me off. So I cut out a piece of the lino I drew a very, very simple shape to start me off, or what I thought was simple. Um, and then basically all you do is carve out the lino with this little tool that you get in the kit. You carve out the lino and you leave the pattern that you have basically drawn. So I'm going to speed this up as much as I possibly can and I'll probably chop a load of it out as well because it did take quite a while for me to cut this out. Um, I really had fun doing it actually and this, this lino stamp can now be used over and over and over again. So I don't need to obviously do this process. I, obviously I've only got the one shape for now but it is definitely something I enjoyed. Probably something that I'll do in the future. I also got my Amazon kit back out because the tools in that were far superior to the tool that I was using in the kids kit. Um, and you'll see that in a second. I get that back out and then it basically changed my life, the tools in there. You get a various different tools, all slightly different. Some are more precise, some are for carving out bigger areas. Um, but that did save me quite a lot of time. I probably should have used that from the beginning. And because I am a novice at this game, I decided to use my stamp on a piece of scrap wood first because I didn't want to ruin my bedside. Obviously, I could have wiped the paint off, but I, I did still slightly doubt myself at this stage. So I'm just using the little roller that came in the kids kit. Again, just keeping it simple for the first time. I'm using the color Drop Cloth from the Chalk Mineral Paint range, which if you remember, was the base color that I used on the bedsides. Whacking it down, fingers crossed. I'm hoping for the best. I, f I feel like, I I'm feeling positive at this stage, but slightly apprehensive. I'm, pay I'm, I'm, I'm praying. Hopefully, there it is. She's done it. We've got a thumbs up, excellent. And then I just did exactly the same thing on the center panels of the bedsides. So the key with this is to not use too much paint because otherwise, obviously, you won't get a nice kind of crisp line. Um, just use a very, very small amount of paint on the lino stamp and obviously don't let it move when you stamp it on the surface, just keep it super still, otherwise again, you will smudge what you've created. Um, and yeah, I'm really pleased with this, definitely something I'll be doing, should have done it sooner. So I let that dry overnight and then we've got a seal, nice little cheeky smile there for the camera. And I'm using Terra Tough to seal the bedsides. So if you remember me saying, Terra Paint does require sealing, um, Terra Tough, I'm just wiping the dust away there with my sleeve. It's very, very technical here at Faft Designs. Um, Terra Tough is by far my favorite top coat to use with Terra. It gives a sheen comparable to wax and you all know how much I like a wax finish, but it is super durable. 
it's very easy to apply it doesn't reactivate the paint when you apply it um, just make sure you do super thin coats allow it to dry fully in between the coats and yeah it's an absolute doddle to use i'm a big fan also, if you've not used terra clay paint before, you might be slightly worried about the fact that it dries considerably lighter than when you apply it. But when you put your top coat on, you can see here in this clip, it basically brings the colours back to how they look when you apply the paint when it's wet. So don't panic if your terra clay paint projects fade because that will all be solved when you add your top coat. Again, let that dry overnight because we want to make sure our top coat is perfectly dry before we do the next and final step, which is applying Best Down Wax in Brown. So obviously these are look chipped away, they look aged, they look worn. And in my opinion, a project ain't finished until you've used wax. So obviously we've used a clear coat, we've used ter Terra Tough um, as a top coat to seal the project and now I'm going in with Best Dang Wax to basically make it look a bit more aged. It also adds a little bit of depth in certain areas and I apply it fairly liberally in the areas that I want to look aged and then I wipe it back with a rag and because I've already used Terra Tough, all oh, the hair's going back, she means business, because I've used Terra Tough as that clear coat to seal the Terra paint, it just means that you get greater control over the best dang wax and you can pull it back in areas you can remove it altogether if you don't like it with a damp cloth um, and i'm also going in here with a little bit of white which also adds aging but in a slightly different way because it just looks a little bit kind of faded and worn So as I mentioned at the start of the video, I'm an idiot and I didn't film an intro or an outro, but here's a close-up of the distressed detail and the chippy finish. And here's a close-up of the homemade stamp, which I'm very proud of. And the final shot. Make sure you hit subscribe to my channel. And if you've got any questions on the process that I've just shown you, please drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.